My name is Asia Scudder. I'm getting ready to start a new series of drawing and illustration classes, and I'd like to invite you to participate. This particular class is just a example, a quick example. We'll be working for about 20 minutes on an illustration of this beautiful coyote that is walking in a winter wonderland, it looks like. And uh, I have been interested in nature and the natural environment since I was young, starting off with drawing classes at my local community art center. And then ultimately I started working at Fontenelle Forest Nature Center in Bellevue, Nebraska, where I learned more and more about the in-depth and practical ways in which nature touches our lives or indeed survives, um, and how inspirational that can be and continues to be for me as an adult. Now, especially during these times of COVID and lockdown, there have been so many different, there have been so many different types of pressure on each, each of us. I know a lot of you have experienced as individuals so many changes and routines and We are going to be bringing this class forward then as an opportunity for you to take a time out, to relax, to connect to just some inner quiet time and just want to get started here. So let's get the ball rolling. Now in some of the previous classes that I've taught recently, we basically have been working from photographs and the reason that I've done that is simply just because it's easier, especially during the winter months when it's so cold and the conditions are so harsh outside. It's much easier for me to bring in photographs from old calendars or books. So sometimes there are reasons of copyright, that it's better not to use other people's photographs, but I always reach back out to the photographer and make sure if I'm going to do any kind of profit making on a drawing that I've created. Otherwise, if it's just for a hobby or experience, then generally I just put it in my draft sketches and illustrations folder. So we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about three different types of drawing, contour drawing, gesture drawing, and then the illustration process itself. And I'm going to set this, this example of a cardinal aside for the moment. And I wanted to also introduce the tools that I'll be using for this class. And they are and represent a whole series of different types of pencils that range from a 10B pencil. So we're all accustomed to our 2B pencil, which is what all of you have used through your school years with the fancy red-tipped eraser and what used to be lead graphite or pencil uh, for drawing or, or writing now has been replaced by graphite. So a 2B pencil, this is a soft, the B represents a softer graphite. And then my pencils range from 6B, 4B, 2B to HB, and the H represents hard or um, a lighter line that will appear on my paper. 
And then the H series goes back upward this, on the scale to around an 8H, at least in the series that I have. Now, I also have a mechanical pencil sharpener, but sometimes I'm just as happy to use a plastic pencil sharpener and all these materials you can pick up relatively inexpensively at your local hobby store or big box store but I also sometimes order materials online through um, either wholesale suppliers or professional suppliers of art materials this is a little um, brush that I use when I'm ready to erase. I have a soft eraser, a gummy eraser, or a white eraser. And rather than using my hand to stroke across an image, if I need to erase a line, I will generally use a light brush to just brush off the tailings of the eraser. And then I also use a smudge stick. And you can see this one has definitely been used. Uh, sometimes I do use the side of the smudge stick. Other times I'll use the point to create a softness. And I'll show you here on this cardinal. Um, a softness where I may, in other cases, be using lines that are somewhat close together to create dark shadowing or a little bit more loosely spaced to create a lighter appearance of a shadow. And then if I want to blend those to create a softer form, then I will use a smudge stick. And um, I'm just going to hold this up a little bit closer to the screen so you can kind of see how that smudge works and, and how that will integrate into the drawing that we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and get started. To start with, I'm going to start with the gesture drawing. And what I'm looking for in my pencils is a charcoal pencil that um, will have a darker mark. Uh, oh, here it is. So I put it down on the desk so you guys could... I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So in order to loosen up, in other words, these are sort of the testimonials of moving from the busier part of my day to getting ready to draw. So that transition from driving in traffic or dealing with a lot of logistics around family or home or those sorts of things. Instead, I'm going to just slow down a little bit. And as I get ready to draw, what I'm going to do is start breaking down in my gesture drawing the general shapes so that for instance, the very first sea turtle that I drew did not look like this. It was a very loose, squiggly drawing, and likewise for this heron, same is true that I didn't just start. And my background and philosophy behind drawing animals is partly from a scientific vantage point. I was trained in wildlife biology at Colorado State University and I finished up my studies at the University of Nebraska in Omaha and began looking at ecology as a system. So each of these animals are very different from one another, aren't they? So the turtle obviously has its own way of evolving even compared like a land turtle to a sea turtle has different aspects that allow it to survive in the specific environment that it's in. And I'm telling you this now because when we get into these looser gesture drawings, all of it becomes very pertinent as I'm looking at 
what is the drawing that I'll be working on today. So the same with birds. Birds are vastly different from one another. So uh, the cardinal, for instance, has a very specific bill that allows it to break seeds and nuts very easily. So for such a small animal, it's able to break open very hard bits of shells in order to get the nut on the interior. And then also, for instance, with the herons, of course, they have this great elongated bill that allows them to uh, really rock it into the water and capture fish. Um, so the morphology was something that became of interest to me as I was doing my early studies in college. And when I moved into wildlife illustration, then I took all that knowledge that I had of ecology and the environment into the drawings that I was creating. And in a way for me then, my drawings are informed a little bit by the spirit of the animal, which I believe many of you understand, that there is a spiritual nature to the world around us. Something that I personally draw inspiration from. And then each animal, of course, has its own categorization or way of being in the world. So as I teach, I do like dropping bits of information in and invite students to do research on the subjects that they are drawing about and so that there's more understanding about what small details in any animal's physiology, allow it to be a survivor in its environment. So let's go ahead and, and make an effort towards this idea of gesture drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and spell out this word. And you can, this is my charcoal pencil. You can definitely look up gesture drawing and find out more about it. But the idea is to just be very loose. It's a very rapid drawing. Again, it's just a way to kind of untangle. The mission is to untangle from the stresses of ordinary life and get ready or prepared to draw. So going back then, I'm going to start looking at this animal in terms of general shapes. Knowing that this is going to be a messy drawing, I am really going to just loosely, very loosely, start expanding on some of the aspects. And you might laugh and giggle at my drawing. That is okay. Why does it keep on me? <laughs> so it is definitely just part of this learning about the animal process. And normally artists don't show these types of sketches. These are things that get tossed away or maybe in artist studios, they might be things that you would see on their wall, and they can be very loose and disorganized. Definitely not the things that we would show off to our friends and family. So that's one gesture drawing. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a second one. So every time I do this, I'm getting a little bit of a better feel. Right now, I'm just focusing on the face. A little bit better for a 
feel uh, for our eyes, our nose, kind of forms a bit of a triangle. So a little wider here, a little narrower here. I'm seeing a triangle. Just beautifully oversized ears <laughs> that are perfectly intended to help this animal capture sound. A little mouse or a rabbit moving. Then again, I'm just doing very quick, brief. This is just also throwaway paper for me. This is just regular eight and a half by eleven paper, um, and then. Do one more for the purposes of this video. Now, if I were just alone and not filming this, what I would be doing is doing several of these and beginning to think about composition, how I want my drawing to look. On the paper when I get ready for for sketching. And again, I really do invite you to just do a little bit of a internet search on gesture drawing. Find out more about how it helps your mind to just loosen up just a little bit and see without having to get a drawing absolutely perfect in that first first round. So you could see even just for my drawing in a matter of three minutes or five minutes I'm beginning to get more definition. I'll, um, I'll stop there. Now, if I was going to continue in teaching a class, I'd be working on a bit larger paper and also I would be um, employing some techniques that would involve um, comparing master's works, and some of their studies as well. So what I'm doing now is moving to a 2B pencil. Now this is a 2B in the art graphics variety, and I'm going to do something much different, and this is called contour drawing. Now contour drawing is the opposite of what we were just doing, which was sort of quick messy sketches. So now I'm going to do a very slow, methodical drawing that is going to be, it's going to look foolish because I'm going to be drawing as if I'm drawing with my non-dominant hand. So specifically, I am not going to worry about any mistakes or errors and I'll do this again. I'm not going to do the full practice here because this is just an introductory video. Uh, but the way the contour drawing works is that I just maintain a steady focus on the subject that I'm drawing. Which in a way is like getting to know a good friend. Or it's a new friendship that I hope becomes a good friendship. And... What I will be doing here is taking just any spot. So I'm going to start here at the upper right ear. And I'm only going to look at the ear. I'm not going to look at my paper at all. And again, this is just going to be a throwaway. So I'm not worrying about lines matching up. 
this is just a very delicate process of letting my mind slow down, gazing at the image with an intention of gathering information in a way that takes me a little bit further into my right brain. So you know the, the left brain is that messy stuff where I want things to be just right and lined up just so and eventually I will get there. But I want to give my right brain permission to really explore the subject before I start doing that drawing. Because again, part of the dynamic is understanding the physiology, like I spoke to before with the birds, or the different shells of different turtles, or with any kind of land mammal. All of the morphology, is different between species, between kinds of animals, but then also just the personality of, of the animal itself. Not to mention decisions that I might make as an artist on composition and what kinds of things that I would like to continue to work on. So to Again, this is just a very brief explanation of how these classes come about. So I'm going to stop there. So this is contour drawing. Very slow, very messy, almost like we're using our non-dominant hand. So it looks pretty silly and out of off-center and a little bit wackadoodle. Okay. Or actually, almost like a doodle. <laughs> now I'm going to put aside my just throw away scrap paper. And I have a special place that I keep this for testing. So there may be times during my drawing process where I want to test an idea or a concept. I'll get started then with the drawing itself. And for my drawing, in terms of composition, I am just going to focus on the face right now of this coyote. Um, so in order to do that, I just got, I have a blank page and this can be one of those things where you kind of, an artist, myself included, sometimes I have a bit of writer's block where I'm, I'm almost like don't want to start. So, but I'm encourage everyone to just get started somewhere start somewhere so to, i'm going to start at the upper tip of the ear and i'm moving now to using one of my lighter harder pencils so in this case i'll use a 4h and if you remember from early on in the conversation the H pencils are a little bit harder and they're a little bit lighter, so it's easier to erase if I make mistakes early in my drawing. And my drawing is going to be a series of layers of pencil that go onto the paper. So this will be the first layer, which is the lightest layer. And this is also good if you're going to progress towards using color especially watercolor, 
it's just good to remember that we'll often be working from lighter to darker. At least that's my rule of thumb. So let's just jump in. So I'm watching the facial features. Now I'm looking at the ratio of the size of the size of the ear from the tip to the sort of each of the triangular points of its the base of the ear, soft triangle. Where the eyes, if I were to draw an invisible line here from the tip of the ear, where does the eye get established with the nose? And same here. So I'm just taking a little bit of time to coordinate if there were a vertical line. And where do I want this to land on my paper? So for each of these drawings, I've made compositional decisions. Now, they're not finished, of course, but these are just sketches or ideas. So what I would like, if I'm just drawing mostly the face and I'm going to have the body kind of disappear into the background. So I'm going to put the face a little bit off center. And I'm going to start with the tip of the ear. Now, at times, I'm not going to do the 